We're gonna start what it over for just for Mr. Hassan Rahim, artist. His name is artist because he's a real artist, and he bringing out WACTP TV, and that is one of the most interesting yeah. channel ah. on YouTube. So watch, subscribe, Ma. and hit a like. What? Ma? All right. There is nothing in the world more powerful than an idea whose time has come. And the time has come for us to work it out. I had a conversation with myself and I decided that I wanted to go to Belize and help the people of Belize. Listen. Now the weddings are going to jail I'm not sure to see tomorrow hey. But my faith is strong I put my trust in the lion No judge I gave us this life Love amongst us, hey Not the way things are going Hoping to enlighten, inspire, and more than anything, hoping to cause you to think. Yeah. Space. Good day, Mr. Hassan. Good day, Mr. Hassan. This is your this conscious speaking. Is your conscious Congratulations speech. on your arrival. We pay closer to your conscience. You have paved the way and you have proven to many. Your life ought to accept that you are not in your business. You have paved the way and proven to many. And proven yourself in many areas. Who, me? Stay tuned to WACP, the place to be. All we are creating the threat. Wake up to the knowledge of who you are. Your patient, if you decide to accept it, will be in three stages. Who you are. One, introduce yourself and let the people know exactly who you are and what you've done. 
and you fail. Two, you must share your vision of a tuition-free, non-accredited, self-help action institute. An institute established to help create jobs and build new opportunities. Yes, um, we are working on a program. Yeah, and three, you must do this all within this one short video. You must convince thousands to like, join, share, and donate to your timely cause. We have given you the key to unlock all the passageways to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Enjoy your mission. This message will self-delete in five seconds. No justice? Come get a piece of this great paradise bound and believe us. Believe it or not, that although taught his sheep, I wasn't buying or selling any more of that shit ski. Instead, I would like to get some action. It's time for some self-help action. If we are creative people, and we are, we must walk the walk. So here I am. In search of promised land Greetings, in search and of new beginnings our YouTube and video new opportunities channel. that Stay I tuned. must share with you in real time episodes. start way right, back in 1943, riding on the back of us, drinking from colored water fountain, being a, being a scribe in the Boy Scouts, and eating watermelon, drinking red soda pop on Juneteenth in Dallas, Texas with my mom and pops. I won't start there. I graduated from Lincoln High School in 1962 with honors. I was Lieutenant Colonel S2 Intelligence Officer for the ROTC and editor cartoonist for the Cadet Post newspaper. Was a member of the state champion Black Knight Drill Team, but I still can't start there. Majored in commercial art and advertising, and I can't start there. I remember wondering why on my side of town, everybody was black and poor. And on the other side of town, everybody was white and wealthy. Why was that? Hmm. I had questions. The church couldn't give me no answers. So I joined the Nation of Islam under the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I studied with the brothers and sisters for 11 years and became Southwest Regional Community Relations Director over five states. What happened with that? I graduated. My quest for knowledge didn't stop there. It peaked Atlanta when I established the Edifice Dinner Theater. They call it the Black Edifice, remember? It was a meeting place for the conscious community. While performing my duties as Regional Community Relations Director, working with the Nation of Islam, I recruited community organizations to join with me to support a day of solidarity that I named Black Family Day in Dallas, Texas. Tom Joyner and radio station KKDA were major sponsors of this event. At the end of the day, we had made history with the longest motorcade parade ever extending from the radio station in Grand Prairie, Texas to the Market Hall in downtown Dallas. Twenty thousand people showed up. Why? Because Muhammad Ali was the main attraction. Now, guess who promoted Tom Jonas' roast and toast before he left Dallas, going to Chicago to become the fly jock? You got one guess. Yep. 
I was young, gifted and black, and full of ideas. Some of them made money and some of them didn't. That one didn't because he had too many friends. On June the 19th, 1990, I established the first Juneteenth Street Festival in Atlanta, Georgia, the campus of Atlanta University. On that same day, I premiered the WACP Tape Station Library across the street from the Atlanta University Library. Dr. Khaled Muhammad, Dr. Asa Hilliard, Dr. Africa, and Bobby Hemet frequented the library, the WACP library, to talk shop and to, ex to access this vast array of Afrocentric information on cassette tapes. Shout out to Kaepernick, Roland Morton, Sonetta, The Breakfast Club, and the many brothers and sisters who took up the torch that we lit back in the day when we shared over 50,000 cassette tapes that people shared that were reshared around the world. You know, from age 14, I started making money with my art, painting signs in the neighborhood, addressing curbs, designing book and album covers, stationery and logos, and creating many other unique self-help action opportunities. In 1994, I established the WACP African Superstore in South DeKalb Mall, Atlanta, Georgia. It featured my artwork on my Mylar balloons, t-shirts, store rugs, greeting cards, poster prints, and Afrocentric clip art CDs. Along with products from other African-centered vendors, this was the largest store of its kind in the Western Hemisphere. In 2004, I almost lost my famous rapper son, Raheem the Dream, to a double aneurysm. Thank God he's okay now. From 2008 to 2018, I created and managed a social network community called WACPTV.ning.com. With 2,000 select members worldwide, we established a prototype for what we're about to do now with the WACP TV Self Help Action Institute. 2011, social reform, 112, visual graphic arts. Our online community is established and dedicated to assist individuals and groups to communicate and receive communications from these areas of expertise. In order to share systematically within one family, we have created a revolutionary form of media for the people, by the people, and of the people. Established in 2008, WACP TV is fast becoming the new world live interactive almanac for creative people who want to make a difference in self-empowering as well as changing the environment. You are no longer dependent on the mainstream news media to bring you lies and deception. Sponsored by Death Dealing Products. We are taking control and you can be a vital part. And this is a copy of my self-published book in 2004. Got a copy of that? Well, you're lucky. You are locked in at WACP and I'm going to show you how we are creative people. Stay tuned. Maybe you can testify to some of these accomplishments. If so, leave us a comment. If not, check out some of these people who can testify. Stay tuned to WACP, the place to be, for we are creative people in the past, present, and future. Hey, yo, check it out. This is your boy Raheem the Dream, straight H-E-L, my dad. He will be 77 this year. His name is Hassan Ortiz Rahim. That's right. Daddy doing the thing, man. He's been filming, been traveling the world. He's in Belize right now. And uh, he's been putting it down, man. He's been teaching me uh, all the things that I know. And I've learned he's very artistic. That's why his name is Ortiz. Okay. Uh, original name, Clifford Roy Jackson. Long line of talented family members. So my dad has traveled the world, and uh, he had got this beautiful documentary of himself. And most people don't live to tell their own story, so he's telling his, and he did it in the perfect time. He's in the fourth quarter. You know, when you're in the fourth quarter, you're over 75 years old. Dad'll be 77 this year, 2020. Okay, December 23rd. So my pops been putting it down for years. 
and meeting all these good people. And I know if you met my dad, you know he's one cool cat as well. So I just wanted to get on here to, to share my words with you guys and let you know we love my pops. A lot of people love you, Dad. Dad don't do nothing but spread the love around the world. Daddy had more love than money. He tell you, he'll tell you in a minute. He's rich with love. Okay, so this goes out to my pops. You've been putting it down. We love you. I love you. The rest of the world love you, Dad, man. And uh, I've been honored to be on here on your story. We love you, Dad. My name is Sister Lucille Muhammad. And what I and I am I've been in Atlanta since 1977. Is that 30 years? And WACP. I knew it before it officially existed. Because I've known Brother Hassan for a good 28 years. And he was then doing informal WACP in the community. Brother Hassan has worked in the community, been a part of our community for 30 years that I know of. And our working brother in WACP is an extension of him. This brother makes sure that the work has made sure for the past 30 years that the community and what we're doing in the community and the things that need to be done in the community are kept alive. So that's what I know about WACP. My brother Hassan, I love him dearly. We go way back. I saw Mega. history of African Americans here in Atlanta and probably around the United States. But he is serious about getting performances, news. I saw him interviewing Councilman Young about some break-ins. And Councilman Young was almost in tears because, you know, a young man had been killed in this home invasion, that moment is me to write about having been killed. So that's say that Brother Hassan is an inspiration and uh, personally inspiring to me. Okay, greetings everyone. We're here at the uh, Malcolm X Festival and we have one of uh, Cork Atlanta's finest graduates. We're here with Celine. Celine. Uh, what do you think about today, Celine? Well, it's always great to see these many Africans assembled together and living in peace and enjoying 
enjoying each other's energy. There's nothing like it. WSTV is the number one historical information gatherer, speak gathering organization probably in the country or in the world that I know of. It has a whole history of gathering information. Mother Africa. Up around all white people. And so what I have to take from this experience is that um, everybody, you know, there are no casualties. Everybody is black. Everybody needs guidance. And everybody needs um, somebody, a parent, you know, station, TV to teach them how to love themselves. Because that's the hardest thing I'm facing right now. It's not beauty. You know what I mean? It's not intelligence. It's the love of myself. So as long as y'all can keep that up, you know, spread this to the little kids, the longer we can survive. You know what I mean? That's the next, that's the future. That's me. So they'll love us first. <laughs> Thanks. Peace. is Sherry Wombo and I know about WSB, you're at all the events that we have, you're, you give, you're where, uh, you know, you're well informed, you tell us what's going on and you cover, you know, important events such as this and I'm really happy to be here and I commend you for the work that you do and keep it up. without an introduction. Many of us have lost loved ones within the last years, months, and days. I'm sure you're thinking of them. I lost my sister, Velma Jackson Johnson, in 2017. And this year, I lost my oldest brother, James Jackson Jr. And I lost my younger brother, Larry Douglas Jackson. 
I lost my first wife, Dr. Zakia Rahim, who was the mother of my, of my offsprings. Makaya Rahim the Dream, Asia Rahim, Jean, and Uriah Rahim. Someone you're thinking of? Check out my son, Rahim the Dream, his brand new hit single, Dr. Zakia Rahim. Thinking of you and our many relatives who have passed to the other side. May you rest. Gone is all I heard. I lost my mama on May 3rd. Wow. She was more than a lifetime movie. That's right. Just a glimpse of what she meant to me. Taught me to be all I can. Cause it's twice as hard to be a black man. Hey mama took a page out of your book. Your son got a good look. Still CEO of my record label. Mama used to hit me with my record label. Me, my two brothers, and my two sisters. I, my mama really, really miss her. Can't erase her, can't replace her. You only get one, and it's God who makes her. There's never been a rain The rainbow has been set And at the end it's me and you Taught public schools and universities My mama had a PhD She stopped even at the top She opened up two smoothie shops oh, girl. But guess what else my mama did Had mama and pop stove when I was a kid and oh yeah, she wrote songs too She said, don't limit yourself to what you can do mm. She had back the basis to a Tory, yo Mama, this here, your memorial You're gone, but you ain't really gone Cause how many people get to have their own song? Okay, my point exactly And I know my mama looking at me WACP TV, Rahim the Dream, featuring Mazi. When I came to the and I turned 75, I said to myself, Self, what do you do with your life when you've been in here and found them all out? What do you do in your life when you've been through uh, political this and, and all different types of everything? What do you do? Do you sit back and retire and sit by the lake or the beach and just chill? Or do you turn everything that you've learned into something positive to do to help people? You know, so I had a conversation with myself and I decided that I wanted to go to Belize and help the people of Belize. I don't know where I'm going to get my next meal from and I see a lot of that, a lot of that, too much, too much. And then I see wealth as well. And I say, well, my ministry. 
ministry, I want to make movies. I want to help people with jobs and resources and opportunities. Bottom line, our ministry, we are creating people. If we are, then we need to create a way out of nowhere. You are the first men that came in San Antonio that come and do something special uh, like this. Now uh, watch here, watch here. If you say that this is the gift of God, our flag, you have more flags that are around us than just our Belizean flags. Right in the middle. If it's right in the middle, tell you that yeah. you came to a blessing home. No matter what people talk about Belize, Belize is blessed. Yes. And so is San Antonio because there are always good and bad people around. But here, the good one can always change the bad one. And you are one of the good ones, and you will God send you here to change a lot of our life. Maybe even my life. Because like I said, you will be opening your school here and do your computer job. And it's never, ever too late to learn. To learn. Our next report will certainly make you look at your coconut tree in a whole different light. Hassan, I'm sorry, has become a mainstay in Corozal as far as the arts go uh, and uh, went full on into uh, coconut art. In fact, did a couple of courses, I think, at the Corozal House of Culture as well as at his facility. Yes. And we love partnering with Hassan, so he is a part of that as well. <laughs> especially if you consider yourself an artist or creative person. A course being held at the Corazon House of Culture is teaching individuals how to make art out of the parts of coconut trees that you likely dispose of as trash, as trash regularly. For course instructor U.S. National Living in Corazon Town, Hassan Rahim, a coconut tree is more than just a big tree. The plant has become the primary source of material for his art, and this week he is sharing his unique knowledge in a first-time coconut farm art workshop. He stopped in to check it out. As a creative person, we want to look for items and opportunities. And so coming to Corazon uh, only two years ago, I look around to see what item is pinnacle that you can turn into art. And looking around, I noticed that the coconut tree is very plentiful. And looking at the coconut tree, it has a lot of different components to it that can turn into beautiful art. So um, being an artist myself and coming from a family of artists and background of artists and living a whole art life, uh, I decided to do something with the coconut tree, and uh, it grew into what you see here, and then uh, I was extended an opportunity to uh, facilitate a workshop. I've never done this before. Uh, this is a first for me. This footage is from the Coco Fest in Mexico, where I was one of five artists selected to represent Belize from the Carzal House of Culture. Transportation, lodging, food, and booth space was included in the award. The same type of award was gifted to me again in 2019 to exhibit in the Street Art Fest in Belize City. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah. Uh, all right. 
description box to click on the event or workshop of your choice or just watch them all <laughs> For example, and told us that he would want to help artists make something of this skill. I would like to develop the class into an industry, actually, uh, because there are so many people. There's there's uh, single moms, there's uh, young children, there's all type of people who uh, need to have something to do and uh, take that something to do into something that they can put in their pocket and pay their bills. So I see it as a new industry. You know, if you look around, you don't see, you don't see this everywhere. You see wood carving, and you see other types of art, but the coconut tree, which is the most plentiful, you don't see a lot of this. So I would like to see an industry that could grow into something 
made in Belize, uh, uh, helping Belizean to take their art to another level and help them to sustain themselves through art creativity. with Raheem, you can contact him at 637 Searching for a new beginning in Belize hasn't been easy. But find out how our connections will make it much easier for you if you want to come and visit or set up business. I think that fear is one of the worst elements that you could maintain and live by. We haven't made that move because of fear. I'm supposed to be here to do what I need to do for me and for you. So. I want to translate that fear into an institute that teaches action, take actionary steps to abort fear and turn fear into progress and success, uh, to turn fear into projects that work for the good of all the people. Turn that fear into an institute that you don't have to pay a tuition. An institute that don't accept you because of your credentials or your grades or your complexion. Yeah, they do that too. So, uh, an institute that takes the credits that you build up from working inside and with the Institute, take those credits and give it to you as a voucher and you can take that voucher and turn it into money. Different ways. So an Institute requirement and restriction is that you must be 16 or, or over. And you must be uh, mentally able to follow and even design because, you know, we need teachers, students, entrepreneurs to come together and form this institute. The name of the institute is WACP TV, it's Self-Help Action Institute. Because that's the way it's built. It's built to do that. You know, working together in 12 unique categories. I just want to break it down and tell you what I want to do to you. I don't want to prolong this uh, because there's individual vi videos that explain everything in every level. So I won't prolong that part of the conversation. But I would like to say this. Since I've been in Belize, everywhere I look is an opportunity. Everywhere I look, there is some land or house or vehicle or something for sale at a very reasonable price. And I find that people that want to change their life, get come in out of the cold, 
come live in the tropics. Come uh, have their money uh, triple and quadruple when they get here. Uh, uh, have uh, an environment of people that work, and live, and play together of all races and denominations right here in Belize. Nobody, no wars, no racial spice, none of that in Belize. Well, excuse me, I'm not going to speak for everybody. I'm going to speak for what I've seen, and I haven't seen that. So, um, getting back to uh, repatriating or coming to another place that has a welcome sign out. And that's what we're creating right here on this property. A welcome sign, a welcome center that when you come to Belize, you come to the Welcome Center, we have all the information, we have the tours, we have the, all the, um, the schedules of places that you can live, places that you can tour, places that are uh, 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 business opportunities that you can take advantage of. We'll have all of that already ready for you even before you come. So we want to welcome you to Belize. Um, they say the gateway to the ancient Chatamon. And Belize has a city that's called Carazal. And that's where we are right now, which is approximately 10 miles from the border of Mexico. So that's where we're starting with this venture, with this project to help the people of Belize, to help ourselves, to help to build a model that could be used around the world. Because tuition is getting too high, and uh, what do you call it? Um, student loan, I mean, that's a, a nightmare. Enough money to do the things I'd like to do for me and for you. Money. What is money? Is money a piece of paper or a piece of gold or is money currency? as in the mind, current, see, vision, money. I've never had enough money to do the things I'd like to do for me and for you. You know, I've done this in my life. I've worn a lot of hats. As you can see, I got a lot of hats, and hey, I wear them. Um, it makes me feel good to know that I don't have to be a certain kind of way every day. That I don't have to do a certain kind of thing every day the same way. You know, we are creative people, but we've been chained up our minds following institutions that are not so creative. So what happens then? You have people who work on jobs that they hate. We have people waking up in the morning getting ready to go do something that they hate. We have people who work in an environment that cook your food and hate the job that they're working on. And what happens 
when you eat that food that they hated to cook. Well, we got to put things in perspective. This is an opportunity time greater than any opportunity in a long time. People are being laid off. Big people who uh, have big titles and uh, degrees behind their name is looking for another way because that way didn't work. So we have to create new institutions in this new day, this day of the pandemic when everybody is looking for a way out and thinking that it might be a vaccination, but we don't know because we're not on that side of it. We don't even know if we should participate because we haven't done the studies. And if you don't know, you don't know. But I tell you what, we do know that we are creative people and it's time for our creative self to come together and create a way out of no way. Because it appears that there is no way, but there is a way when we come together. Now, back to the subject of who I would like to be in my 77 year of thinking about it. I'd like to be a philanthropist. Yes, I'd like to be the world's greatest philanthropist. I would like to be the person that gives and gives and gives, not just giving, just to be given, no. I mean give like an investment giving, like invest in you and you invest in the idea that we can do this, we can make things happen, we can make money appear out of thin air. That's vision, and we will open Self-Help Action Institute, WACP-TV Shea Institute. That's the place where we train vision. That's what we call it, a TV. We train vision, and Everybody who participates, whether you are a student or a teacher or a business person, you're participating as one of the members of the circle that makes everything flow like currency. Everything we touch is current and we can see our way through because the old way has not worked for us. So we have to create a new way for this new day. And as I change my hats, I like this one. <laughs> okay, now back to business though. My birthday is December the 23rd. That's only a month away if you're hearing this message on the day that it dropped which is November the 23rd. I've completed a mission on this video. One, two, three mission. And you witnessed it. Now, there's a mission that I would like to pass on to you. And it's a one, two, three mission. Number one, I would like for you to share this video with any and everybody that you can make this bad boy go viral because we need this to happen. Somebody needs to be a philanthropist for you and for me. Somebody needs to be in the position to help because the people that are in position to help are not helping. I don't know why. I could ask, but... I don't see no help coming from the people who got everything. So in my position, I would like to be in that position so I could see why. And I think the why is as simple. You just 
stingy and selfish but I want to show you an example of what to do when you have because I would like one for people to share this video and let it be known that I want in my possession one million dollars by my birthday December the 23rd which is less than 30 days from now that's what I want number one number two I would like for you to consider changing your diet so that you can live longer so that you can be healthier and happier and so that you can make things happen in your mind because the food that you're eating is garbage 90 percent of food from the grocery store is garbage today and we know that but we keep eating it and getting cancer and lung disease and, and heart disease and, and, and all kind of disease. This corona thing, it asked around and see if anybody's dying that had uh, a good diet and health and everything like that. You might find it. I don't know. <laughs> but the majority of the people have pre-existing condition. They overweight or something like that or they got something going on. You know, so let's get our diet uh, back on track. Now, not a lot of things. You know what number one is, right? Share this video, okay. Number two, your diet. You know, get healthy. Get get back on track so we can do some stuff together. We can't do nothing with sick people. Okay. Now, number three. Number three. I need you to look in your funds and see how much you could afford to send to me in the various ways that we have links for you to do and do it ASAP because there's too many people that need help and I would like to be the one to help now I'm not talking about handing out nobody no money. No, I'm talking about building institutions, building institutions of today that help people to help people. That's what I'm talking about because I don't see that. So that's the help that I need. I need you to help me to help the people. And I'm serious about this. I need this by the 23rd of December. Between now and then. You don't have to wait until then. This is what I need. So one, two, three, you know what they are. One, what's one? Share this video, make it go viral. Two, what's two? Clean up your act. Keep your health intact. How to eat to live? You need to read that book and a whole bunch of more books. And, and, and check out the internet, see what you eating. Cause that stuff it ain't even produced by uh, food companies anymore is produced by chemical companies you know so check yourself before you wreck yourself you know that's what I'm talking about I'm 77 and I can say this kind of talk I can talk this talk I've never said I, <laughs> this is my first time even opening up my mouth because I didn't feel worthy but I do feel worthy now I feel worthy that you will respect those wishes of a 77 year old I won't say master I won't I won't put a name on it I'm just 77 <laughs> you know what I've been through cuz you probably been through it too so help me to help you so I we can help other people it's time out for people taking advantage of people you know using their money using their they time using everything using them up but not giving them nothing we got to stop that. We got to have some example in the world somewhere, you know, for how to do right about people. Now, that's what I want to do. That's what I want to be. I'm an artist and I'll always be an artist, but I want to be a philanthropist and I want you to help me to be what I want to be for you and for me. I never had, I never had, I never had enough money to do the things I'd like to do for me and for you. 
peace, shalom, thank you, praise the Lord, Jesus wept, hmm, and free up some land, hotel, assalamu alaikum, abaragani, we are creative people, and we're out, oh, let me let you know, we're going to share what we do with you on a regular basis so that you can see what we're doing with the money every day. You know, we, you can see how we're utilizing what you have blessed us with <laughs> because we want to create an example for the world of how to do things right for a change. I want you to keep those three missions on your mind and pass them on. Pass it on like you've never done before. I know you've passed on jokes and all kind of funny stuff and all kind of information, you know, to one person to another person and everybody laughed about it or whatever. But let's finally pass something on that means something. That's right. Hats off to Minister Louis Farrakhan for asking for one million black men to come together in one place on a Monday and got two million. <laughs> that's the kind of thinking, that's the kind of vision training, training vision that we want to do. We want to train that type of vision to make that type of thing happen every day in your mind, in time. Peace out. Hush not, child, and don't cry. Your folks might understand you by and by. Just move on. Your destination, though you may find from time to time complication. Hello, Bacamarty. Hello, Rama. And wishing folks might understand.